I was married when I was 14 years old. But I was determined to be better than a statistic because mm -hmm. it will just be, oh, we have about 30% of women in the Gambia married before they're 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. It was mm -hmm. very difficult, but I was determined to be something else, to be my own woman, to mm -hmm. be my own independent person, to be someone who would not need introduction. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was forced to go for to my um, late husband's family for the weekend, and then I am required to cook, to clean, even after high school, I would do that. And then they would be like, when I was going to university, oh, what kind of wife is this one? They would say in Mandinka, oh, new manke musoti, ni mana futuwala, meaning this person is not a wife. She did not come here to get married. So if I had listened to those comments that were made by people because I was thought of as a less of a person because of the fact that I valued education because of the fact that I was still going to university or even when I was married, being in seventh grade, I was still going to school. That was a problem for most people. They didn't understand that. And that could be linked to um, Fatu's comments about, you know, um, um, thinking that a woman's or a girl's place is in the kitchen because as difficult as they had even made it for me. I remember sometimes I would wake up as early as 5 or 6 a.m. to go to the market, go get the groceries, come home, cook, and then go to university. Sometimes I would be late for school, but that was because I did not want to believe in those myths. But it's not every person who also had that opportunity to persevere in all of this. So now I, when I think about it and I'm like, if I had allowed those women or those comments that were made by men and both men and women alike about how my role is as a woman or was supposed to be, I, I lost my husband after I had my first child and she was 11 months old when um, her father passed away. I didn't have any job. I was still in third year university. I was, I, I didn't know what I would have done because then if I hadn't forced to go to school, if I hadn't done that for me, you know, education having changed my life, then I would have been, I don't know what I would have been now. How would I, how would I have taken care of a child? I would have probably just remarried within that family and that would be the story. But these are some of the myths that we want to break that if you have the, uh, the opportunity to, to educate yourself, not only are you going to have a higher chance of being economically empowered, but you also will not be dependent on another person. And you would also remove yourself from toxic relationships. You will remove yourself from abusive relationships. And I think because they do not want that to happen, because they want women to continue to live in that vicious cycle of dependency, vicious cycle of abuse, amongst other things, this is why they will not encourage girls' education. This is why they will make comments about women who are working, women who are educated to say that, oh, you're Jung law you are not like, I don't even know the equivalent of that in, in English, but you are not wife material. And I, my, my point always is, who said that I cannot be someone's mother, I cannot be someone's wife and still be an intellectual? Who said that there needed to be restrictions on my abilities and on my potentials? And I feel and believe that this is one what we need to, to teach women and girls. And this is what education does for people. So a lot of people will fight it because they don't want us to persevere. But that wouldn't happen. With people like Aneta, people like the two parties, that's Fatu Balde and Fatu Baji, and a, lot, uh, and a lot more people, we are going to debunk these myths. We are going to change these narratives and make education quality and accessible for girls. Amazing. Thank you, thank you so much, Muso. It's amazing when we are, I'm speaking from a theoretical perspective and then you have someone that's lived it, mm. you know? It's a different whole ball game. Someone that's lived it and I, I'm, I'm sure we all can feel that passion. We all can feel that lived experience. We all can see how she's broken barriers to reach where she is today. So that brings in, in a whole new dimension of what we are talking about today. And I'm so glad that we have Musu here that she has debunked that, you know, she went through a marriage, a child, early child marriage at the age of 14. 
you know, and from there she has persevered to come on to the level that she is in today. I'm sure when we are talking about FGM, you know, early child marriage, you know, uh, girls education and all, she should be the face of it, uh, you know, and um, girls and other uh, other girls can she can be the point of reference for other girls to see mm -hmm. what is possible of course there are lots of challenges that she has faced you know that she's just named a few like what the other women were saying about her what society were saying about her this this idea that she, she had to conform to what a wife is should be you know all these things um so i i just take my hat off to her um, some of the challenges that I, you know, to me is just, uh, is unbelievable, you know, that someone that would go through all these things and still being where you are today. And I'm sure she's still pushing because it's just because that she's gone that far doesn't mean she's broken all barriers. There's some more barriers that she is facing and she would have to break. So thank you so much, Musu, for that. And um, yeah, Fatu Balde, any myths that you have from your perspective, sorry? Thank you again. Um, every time I hear Musu's story, it's like the first time I've, I've heard of it. Um, see, this is why she's one of the most amazing people uh, here, because um, like you said, it's one thing reading about stuff or hearing about stories, but having lived it and breaking all those barriers to be where she is today. She's an absolute role model, not to just uh, other girls who might fall in the same uh, category, but to every woman, to every woman. So great respect to her. Um, so one myth that I would like to bring on is that um, girls, boys outperform girls. Girls do not perform as well as boys. Uh, boys, boys are more clever. Girls are not clever. Girls are not good at science. Girls, even if you're educated, maybe uh, until the time I was going to school, you're told, uh, maybe choose home economics, uh, you know, go and do easier subjects, you know what girls are like. Despite the fact that we all know, like this year, grade nine, grade six, girls outperformed boys. Like the evidence is there, but still we are made to believe that we are the weaker sex. We, we are the ones who are not as smart as the men, even though it is evidence that girls are outperforming, outperforming uh, boys at, at, at uh, both primary and secondary level. The problem is, you know, because of those myths, you see how the, the problem from, the, the, again, I'm gonna go to my root causes, <laughs> the, that root cause, that myth, that belief, you see girls will, will do so well. How many of these girls actually end up going to college? How many of these girls are given the opportunity to go to university or to go to subjects, take on subjects like STEM, go into technology, go into medicine and all that? Because we are restricted, even if girls outperform, perform exceptionally, these myths and these beliefs continue to, to be barriers. And I like one thing that Musu said earlier about education, not just education, quality education. We know that in some families, when it comes to choosing, they have a, a boy and a girl, and you have to give, you can afford to give quality education to one of them. We know that most families will choose to give it to the boy rather than the girl. That discrimination, what does that mean to that young girl? But also having those role models. When girls go to college, when girls are in school, more, in most areas, they are taught by just male, male teachers. What does that mean? What does it mean to have more female in the classrooms? But when we, when we talk about all this, I know, I know after we will talk about the benefits of educating a girl, but when we talk about all the challenges that women are facing as adults, it all goes back to the fact that a lot of our, our women, our all adult women were denied education, especially, especially quality education from when they were young. How do we change that? How do we change these narratives? How do we make women believe, girls believe that, you know, we are intelligent. In most cases, we outperform men. 
and boys. And you know, the same problems, this meets from that early, uh, early stage. As a girl, you are told that the boy performs better than you. You go and even you go to university, you qualify, you get employed, both you and the guy, the guy gets promoted. He's the man, he's, he's doing a better job. It is the man you see getting more. The, the chances that a man would get promoted are higher than the woman getting promoted. The same like when we look at salaries, wages, these all stem back to the, those root causes, which are the myths, the norms that keep oppressing girls, that keeps denying girls quality education so that we can reach our full potentials. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think, um we are really delving into the topic now and it's really interesting from all you know you ladies that have just spoken um the different myths that we grew up with um whether you're from a privileged background or not you know we have heard it you know my grandmother used to tell me a girl should not be sleeping up till 6 a.m in the morning by 5 a.m you should be up you know, and then when I look around, all the boys were in bed, you know, all these things, that's where it's, it, it comes from, you know, a woman should not talk like this, should not walk like this, should not dress like this, you know, just like this, everything, there's restrictions um, when it comes to educating the girl, the girl child, uh, when you go to school, as, like you said, uh, the one of the things that I'm, I'm always against as well, um, and I would like to see our education system change. I would like to see a change in it. What I would like to see a change in, in our education system is the subject related, gender related subjects. You know, women are supposed to do the sewing and the home economics and what else do women do? All this, you know, I would like to see it we do away with all those things you know they teach us home economics from when we are two years old we've started in the kitchen you know all these things we've been doing it in schools now they should really you know give us this technology related subjects we should be doing practicals in technology you know in the sciences in maths in, you know in engineering i wanted to become an engineer that is what i wanted to do but I didn't see any female engineers around, you know, all these things. So we have to, you know, bring on this thing and also bring out the representation. You know, women that are doing all these amazing things now have to come out. We don't no longer have to wait for people to call us. The other gen the, the generation coming up are hoping on us to come out and say, I wanted to be an engineer, but I'm now working in a technology uh, related industry. You know, I would like to see girls in that area as well. You know, not just being nurses, not just being teachers, not just being secretaries, not just being playing the second, you know, assistant. We are always the assistant kind of thing in that way. But in all this, we have to debunk the myths. So I don't know whether you ladies have any other myths that we can talk about. Um, the floor is all yours. Please go ahead. Thank you, Aneta. Um, first of all, I would like to say to Musu, um, that she's a phenomenal young lady. I have so much admiration for her. And to say thank you for sharing your experience with us, Musu. Um, I think I've heard a little bit about it, but um, you've, you've gone into detail to explain how you broke that glass ceiling. Um, I think all of us um, and many young women should be looking up to you. Um, I just want to add a little bit on the STEM issue. Um, I think that's another big area um, that women are lacking. I think um, we often say men do better in, in, in STEM subjects than women. And as a result, you have um, more men in those careers, you know, in the sciences, in the maths and the engineering and technology. And really there is no evidence again to support that women cannot do well in STEM subjects. Um, I think what is missing and what we need to be focusing on as a society, I think should be around how can we create um, an enabling environment? How can we support girls to do well in STEM subjects? I was reading one article and it says that um, there is a conscious and unconscious biasness um, to girls from teachers towards girls when it comes to um, STEM subjects. I don't like to use unconscious biases. I think it's conscious. I think they're aware what, what they're doing is deliberate, um, you know, whether, whether, yeah, 
wherever it may be coming from, it is deliberate. It's not unconscious most of the times. So I think the conversation should be around how do we support them? You know, the article was, was talking about how teachers would um, physically show girls how to do for example, a science experiment, you know, they, they wouldn't explain and allow the girl to now demonstrate their understanding. You know, with, with a boy, they would actually explain and allow the boy to demonstrate and have a go. But with a girl, they will physically do it for, for her, which shows that there is no trust. You cannot do this. This is not your area. You are not meant to be in this field. And, and bam, the barrier is there already. So these are the things, I mean, the education department, you've talked, um, Annette, that, that they, they need to be a revamp of that. The, the thinking of teachers, you know, to, to remove that biasness towards girls, because when the environment environment is there, there is a safe space, there's an enabling environment, there is no restriction, girls would excel in these areas, you know, our brains are not wired not to understand maths, you know, because we grew up hearing this, when I remember when I was growing up, I hated maths, I didn't like it, I used to say, oh, I'm not good at this, so I, I like talking, so I'll go and do, that's why I did um, arts in school, I went and, went and did pure arts, I was good in reading, drama, all of those things, because for me, <laughs> Maths was for boys. This is not something that my I can do, basically. But that wasn't the case. I mean, in the UK here, you see how much they encourage girls. That's the enabling environment. There might be scholarships that are out that are just meant for girls so that they can be encouraged to explore these subject areas. You know, and, and that's what we call positive discrimination. There's nothing wrong with that, giving girls more opportunities for them to be able to excel in these subjects because often boys dominate these areas so i just wanted to shed some light on that um and yeah that's that's what i wanted to say i think i think yeah that's that's mm -hmm. all thank you <laughs> yes yes that's, that's absolutely uh, the case in in gambia even though we do not have like the science labs and all these things i know that very well equipped in schools what the little facilities that there is in the schools we can see when there are science practicals who is in those classes, you know, um, and we can see when there's home economics practicals who is doing the cooking. You know, we hardly see boys there. The one boy that we will see will be taunting the boys, saying, oh, keep a chakla or something like that, you know. But um, it's high time we show that, yeah, the STEM field is for women as well, you know the maths, the sciences, the technology, the engineering, you know, creating the enabling environment and also bringing representation. Representation is key because it just, you know, opens your mind and show you what is possible that someone that looks like me, you know, represent me, is coming from my background, is doing this, which means it's also possible for me. I can do it. You know, that's, that's that represent. So all the women in the sciences, all the women in, in engineering and technology and um, what's the other one, maths, you have to come out now, you know, and show that these things are possible for the girls. It's possible for, for them. So I cannot wait for to, to create that enabling environment I'm talking about, just to bring girls in the area that I'm in, in technology, you know, web development and all these things so they can see um, what is possible because that is the area that we're in. The digital environment is here. And if we don't take advantage of it, we are letting our, our children down. We are letting the girls down, you know, just trying to pigeonhole them in just a, a certain area, which is something that we need to break away from that, from that norm that girls are only meant to be just this, that, and that, and that. They can do so much more. So that is. Uh, Thank you so much, Fatu. And to all those that are watching us, if there are any myths that you think we haven't shared that you've heard, please share them with us so we can talk about it as well. Thank you so much.